Hello! Welcome back to Shakes here. I had some internet connectivity issues when I was in Alaska and was never quite able to get the videos uploaded and then my memory was wearing out on my iPad saving the January video so I just haven't been filming these and I need to catch up. So this is part two, and they're the books I read in February, but I'm recording this at the end of June, and I expect that the makeup videos are going to be more fragmented, just because it's it's been a while since I've read these books. Uh, today, well, first, forgive my hair, please. I was just out chasing baby chickens in the rain. So it's, it's drying, but it's, it's really curly. And then I also got my bangs cut a little too short. So just have to live with it. The four plays read during February were Comedy of Errors, Taming of the Shrew, Titus Andronicus, <clears throat> and Romeo and Juliet. I'm going to go ahead and start. Oh, and also I don't have the physical copy of any of these books at the moment, I don't think, because they are in the mail still. Media mail from Alaska to South Dakota is pretty slow. And then also after a couple of weeks at my parents, I've come back over to Montana. I just don't have a physical copy of these particular books right now. All right, so let us start with the Comedy of Errors. And I was super excited because this play gave me hijinks. Hijinks, hijinks, hijinks. I watched a really good adaptation on YouTube and I, I might have to see if I can link it in the description. It was just, it was a really good adaptation and uh, I just remember the main characters, the guys being dressed in Hawaiian shirts. Um, so in my journal, I did not keep notes of the names. So I apologize. This is going to be like the most cliff noted review of all time. For character, I gave it an 8 out of 10. Um, I thought it, it was just easy to keep track because the play pairs everyone up, not necessarily romantically, but there's always a pair of characters. Uh, you have some twins, you got the lady and her lady in waiting, uh, the cops, it, everybody's just paired up. Um, but the bit parts were just as interesting as the main cast. For plot, I gave it a 10 out of 10. Not exciting action, but it delivered everything I had been looking for as far as mistaken identity hijinks go. It, it took the concept of twins and ran full steam ahead. Uh, I've reversed things, my bad. <laughs> a, atmosphere. Three out of ten. Uh, it was a city. We've, we've fully established at this point that atmosphere is going to be the area that Shakespeare falls short in because as a play it was relying on staging. Uh, w writing style, 8 out of 10. The comedy made me laugh out loud. The, the story itself was pretty cliched with mistaken identity, identity and identical twins, but it was also really old so Perhaps it gets a free pass there. Um, but 
there's also a reason cliches are cliches because people like them. <laughs> All right. I intrigue. I think that the title Comedy of Errors, by the way, is a great title. And I gave it a 6 out of 10. The amusement in the play kept me going. But I was never really wondering what was going to happen. You, you figure it out pretty much from the get-go. I don't think it was meant to be mysterious at all. Logic. 3 out of 10. The whole setup is just... Unbelievable. It's a series of contrived coincidences. But, I don't know. I liked it still. Which is why for enjoyment, I gave it 10 out of 10. Um, easily the one I enjoyed the most, you know, for the beginning of the year. So, let's see. Next, let's talk about Taming of the Shrew. Now, this one is one of the plays. I don't think we read the play when I was in middle school, but I know we at least read an ex excerpt and watched a film. The film we watched was more of a straight up adaptation. I watched, uh, back in February, I watched Kiss Me Kate. I believe, and I don't know. I guess it did match the themes of the play, but I wasn't really taken with it. And I'm also not really taken with Taming of the Shrew, you're going to find out. Um, so for character, four out of 10, I could identify all of the characters, but I didn't really like any of them. Uh, I, I couldn't sympathize one way or the other, although I did notice where some humor was meant to be coming forth, it didn't, like, I recognized it was meant to be humor, but it didn't make me laugh. And I've read several critiques of this play about how Catherine is actually a strong woman and it all ties back to her final monologue. But I don't know, the expense of her character was just too much for me. Uh, action, no, atmosphere. Four out of 10, pretty bland setting. The only reason I can picture any of it is because I'd seen a movie. Uh, writing style, four, just not that outstanding. Um, even now I can only give you the most basic outline of the premise. The very most basic premise. Uh, plot, six out of ten. So, the simple the simplicity of the plot is memorable. I I remembered what had happened from when I was in middle school, but I don't care for the plot. Entry, five out of ten. I had hoped that since I was older, I would appreciate this play more. So I took that into it with me but I just didn't. I feel like, if anything, I just liked it more as an adult. Logic four. I could see... I could see some of it happening, I suppose. I don't know. Logic should probably rate higher, but... In February, I gave a four, but I made absolutely no notes. Enjoyment, three out of ten. I just didn't care much for it. And the only thing that got me through Kiss Me Kate was the fact that Howard Keel is in it, and I like him. 
All right, Titus Andronicus. Oh boy. So this Titus Andronicus is not talked about a whole lot with Shakespeare's plays. Um, I think it would have to be a diehard Shakespeare fan to even come up with it when they're listing Shakespeare. Uh, like my mom who cares not for Shakespeare in particular, but really any work of literature that's outside of the mystery wheelhouse. Um, yeah, she would never, ever come up with Titus Andronicus. But she could name Hamlet, Macbeth, Romeo and Juliet. Probably much ado about nothing, just because it's one of my favorites. <sighs> Alright. So, I read this and listened to it. And went and watched a, a staging of the play. It's messy. It is so messy. All right. Character. I gave it five out of ten. There's a couple of memorable people. They're awful and dreadful. <laughs> Mean-spirited, but they're memorable. Uh, atmosphere. I gave it a five. I'm a bit late writing this and I can't recall. Oh. So I gave it a five because I wasn't recalling like setting per se, but I recall feeling how dark the whole thing was. It has a dark atmosphere is what I've written here. So I guess that that sort of atmosphere doesn't really necessarily rely on staging. It's more built into the tone of the work and kind of drawing from the plot and the themes. Writing. 7 out of 10. It's way darker. And it. I put a note here that I need to research the context for this play. Uh, I don't know if this is Shakespeare going through something or if he's writing it to appeal to a certain style. Um, I had read something about revenge plot lines kind of being a big thing and that's where Titus Andronicus is coming from. I don't know. Just the writing was better than mediocre. But boy, was it dark. <laughs> Plot four. It's just unpleasant. Unpleasant things all around. Uh, I. It's not enjoyable for me to read about people hurting and maiming and killing. Uh, and just revenge stories aren't for me. Intrigue. Three. I didn't even want to finish it for this challenge. Like, I got part way through it and I was just like, I don't want to do this. But it's, it's not that long, so just plug ahead for a couple of hours. Knock it off the list. I don't ever have to go back to it again. Um, logic. Eight out of ten. It felt really grounded in what I knew about the historical time period that it was set in. It felt like it was from a gritty, warlike society, and it it made sense. It tracked with some of what I know about Roman history. Enjoyment two, two, memorable scenes, but much, much too dark for my taste. Uh, it does have. The infamous Your Mom joke from Shakespeare. But you can just look that up, enjoy that line, completely context-free. And you don't need to read Titus Andronicus. 
Which brings us to the most famous play of the four, and that is Romeo and Juliet. Um, I know we had to read this one in eighth grade, and it was my first Shakespeare play, and it about put me off Shakespeare forever. It was only thanks to a couple of plays that we did in high school. We didn't do them. A couple of plays that we read in high school that I agreed that, oh, maybe Shakespeare's got some range. They're not, it's not all Romeo and Juliet and sappy, star-crossed lovers. So, yeah, for, well, let's see, eighth grade, 2004, for 20. For 20 years. Oh, I'm old. For 20 years, I have harbored a grudge against Romeo and Juliet. And I guess what I need to admit right here and now is that I owe Shakespeare an apology. Um, I found it to be a fine piece of writing. <laughs> um, just even if what was happening in the play wasn't my taste, each individual line on its own was a mighty fine piece of writing. So let's let's go ahead and go through my my ratings here that I've written down. So character, eight out of 10. I could recall any of the main cast and most of the minor cast. They each bring something important to the table and they have unique points of view, I think. Atmosphere, Rona isn't given much. Oh, six out of 10. Rona isn't given much, but the garden and the tomb, actually, there is some atmosphere that comes through in the writing, and you don't need the staging for it. Writing a perfect 10 out of 10. While you could take any line from the play, and it's a fine piece of writing, there are certain quotes that you can pull, and they are absolute genius. Like, top of the English language. And so many lines from this play just endure, even centuries later. And people quote them knowing where they come from, or not knowing where they come from. They can sometimes quote them completely out of context. Um, a rose by any other name would smell just as sweet. What light through yonder window breaks? Even the famous closing line. And a la never was there a tale of more woe than that of Juliet and her Romeo. Um, in fear of Verona lay. Yeah, sorry, I'm rambling now. Like, trying to just pull them off the top of my head I'm having trouble with but the point is that you hear them and you're like oh that's good writing and then in the context of the play they're even better somehow all right plot I gave it seven out of ten uh because it's a bit dumb but the play gives its plot, gives the concept everything it has. It takes the idea of this whirlwind romance, completely runs with it, and we see the tragedy of these two young people just acting basically off of their hormones <laughs> and was it dumb that their families were fighting in the first place yes 
I don't think Shakespeare ever denies that. But it was also dumb for them to get married and kill themselves within a week. And Shakespeare definitely takes that position. So intrigue. Six out of ten. I wasn't keen going in. Like I said, when I read this in middle school, I hated it. I loathed it. Um, I know the story. I've seen Romeo and Juliet. But then I sat down and I finished the play in one go. Like, there was not stopping to make a meal. There was not, you know, finishing it or reaching a point, going to bed, and then finishing it the next day. It was start the play, sit, 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 finish the play. It was literally one sitting. All right. Logic, I only gave it 5 out of 10 because even though it takes its plot and runs with it, I think think that you have to get over the ludicrously short time span it takes place in. And that's where the biggest jump in logic is, is that this takes place in a ludicrously short time span. Once you can accept that, then everything else flows smoothly. And for enjoyment, I gave it an 8 out of 10 against my will. Like, I went in knowing I was going to hate this. And I came out feeling like it was the most enjoyment I'd had in this challenge so far. So, let's, let's add up the scores and see what we have. Comedy of Errors, everything tallied out to be a six- Point eight six, which is about a four star read. Taming of the Shrew, 4.29. That's a three star read, which is honestly more than I would have guessed considering some of the stuff I said about it. Titus Andronicus, 4.86. Another three star read, which is surprising. Romeo and Juliet, 7.14, a four-star read. So, for the month, coming in at number four was Taming of the Shrew. Number three was Titus Andronicus. Number two, Comedy of Errors. And number one, by a noticeable margin, was Romeo and Juliet. All right. I hope to have this up within a couple of days. And then we'll have to discuss March. And of course, you can't have Shakespeare in March without be wearing the Ides of March. <laughs>